I've got my welly socks. <laughs> got my wellies. Let's get them on. My wellies, <clears throat> a few days ago, last time I was here, I went to put my wellies on. They were full of water because the shed roof was broken. Took the water out and I've kind of had them upside down. So hopefully they are... Um, a whistle. They are dry to put on today. The reason I'm sort of going grrr is the forecast said today was going to be dry all day until about six o'clock. Then we're back to lashing rain and we have yet another storm coming in and I think it's due in two days. Oh my heart, my heart goes out to everyone who's been flooded already. Um, I have experienced flooding. I know how traumatic it is. It's hideous. So this storm that's coming in on I think Thursday, I can't remember what name it's got. It begins with C because it's always alphabetical isn't it? It's like Kieran or something. Um, yeah it's, it's going to be tons and tons and tons more water landing on ground that's already full, saturated. I fear there may be more flooding. You know, I, haven't, I can't remember the last time we had an October that was so wet. It's actually October the 31st today. Happy Halloween, Woo, everyone. Um, which is the perfectly appropriate day for what I'm gonna do today. But yeah, I think um, we won't get, rec not records, we won't get um, the summary of the month until tomorrow because we're still in October. But I've, <laughs> I've got a feeling, sorry, I'm just trying to, can I just, just get my socks and wellies on. Yeah, I've got a feeling when they summarise this month that it's going to be, they're going to say, one of the wettest October is on record. Yeah, I, I honestly, I can't remember an October so wet. Now, because of that, um, just trying to remember, I think I've only had two garden sessions. So do you remember when I showed you the tour, the disaster tour? I can't remember what date that was. It was about the 10th of October. It's about three weeks ago. So since then, I've been back. I did that kind of emergency harvest of the dry beans, thank goodness. <laughs> um, the last of the courgettes, etc. Then... I had another session, one more session down here where I was cropping and dropping um, a few of the beds, I think three, and getting them covered with cardboard. I think I might need to put some more bricks down on the cardboard because this storm that's coming, actually this is maybe something I should point out for our North American viewers or anyone around the world. In the UK, generally, when we talk about having a storm, we're talking about um, high winds, <clears throat> gale force winds, high winds and lashing rain. Sometimes it's just the high winds without the lashing rain, not very often, but yeah. So when we talk about a storm, we're talking about high winds, lashing, lashing rain. We don't tend to get snowstorms here. I know we had the beast from the east in 2018, was it? So we don't tend to get snowstorms, we don't tend to get ice storms, we don't tend to get those kind of, those cyclones coming in from the sea. Ty is, I can never remember if it's typhoon or cyclone when it comes in from the sea. Um, we do get hurricanes in the UK, but they're little. In fact, I think, I don't know if I saw this on QI or somewhere, it's where I get all my facts from, but uh, something crazy like per square mile, we get more tornadoes than anywhere else on the planet, but they just, it's because they're so tiny and they are rarely destructive that we don't take any notice. Anyway, yes. So I might need to weigh that cardboard down a bit more in advance of the storm because the winds are going to be pretty bad. Um, so yeah, it's a bit disappointing, frustrating that I haven't made I really haven't made any progress in the garden since I showed you in that tour of just how shockingly bad it looks at the moment. Historically we've had nice Octobers and I would have been getting on with it but I mean it's just been rain, 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 rain and there have been a couple of dry spells 
the problem has been that I'm in the middle of something else because we've been forecast rain and I think well, I'll just quickly finish this and then I'll, I'll go out and then five minutes later the rain does come or by the time it takes me about 20 minutes to get to the garden by the time I get here it's raining so on my way today <laughs> it's supposed to be a dry day all day it started raining so I've taken my hoodie off hanging it there to dry a bit all that's by way of saying fingers crossed I can share today's harvest with you out there but if it starts chucking down I'm just gonna have to do it and show you the harvest later because today it's the squash harvest yay my guesstimate this year it's going to be low. I had, I had a f slightly fewer plants this year. So I'm going to guess 15. And 15 will be fine because some of them will be big. So there'll be more like four. We'll come to that when we come to it. So I'm going to guess 15. I have lost two already. Ah, oh, this is something I saw on the way and I'll tell you. I've lost two to, I think, foxes. And quite a few of my neighbours have experienced the same and we all have concluded we think it's foxes so they haven't been completely eaten but they've had great chunks taken out of them and frankly I don't want to eat food that's had a wild animal's mouth around it no matter how much I wash it I just I, I just think that's asking for trouble in terms of you know some odd pathogens getting into my system don't want to risk it and the reason we think it is uh, that we all think it's the the foxes is the the gouge marks <clears throat> and all the pumpkins there's gouge marks about sort of five four five centimeters apart really deep it looks like fox canines it's certainly a much bigger bite than you would see from either squirrels or rats um, and we don't have uh, after squirrels and rats we don't have anything bigger other than foxes so yeah pretty short so I've lost two I haven't looked at the rest in the last sort of two three weeks or so there is little miss foxy I see you sweet gorgeous girl so when I've arrived today we're having these showers but it's quite bright as well there is some sunshine and the fox was in my cold frame curled up in that big that big black um, sort of seed tray trough that I put seedlings in. It's the place that I made a bed last winter for the cats. I'll probably do the same again this year. But what I need to remember to do is make the opening into there much smaller. So little Miss Foxy can't get in. I wonder if I can get a shot. Oh, she's about to jump down. She's on my neighbour's compost pile. She's very beautiful. But... The foxes have been a pain in the backside. We are going to go out. I'm just waiting for these clouds to pass very quickly. Um, I think we have two vixens on this site, or at least who use it. Who they are? They're either moving through it hunting, or they've made homes uh, sets underneath sheds somewhere. So there's two. And I think I've going on what I've seen. I think both of them have had two cubs. So that's two vixens, four cubs. That's six foxes plus there's obviously a daddy fox somewhere so that's a seventh fox that's seven mouths to feed there's not a lot around here obviously there's bins in all the streets there's all the bins they'll go in the bins but yeah I think maybe that's why they've been particularly naughty this year is we've just got a, a, a bigger population this year but yeah those cubs in the summer were so naughty leaving gifts rampaging through the plots pooing everywhere the pooing has ceased thank goodness so I think it might be time is it clearing up to go out and see so my guesstimate is 15 what's your guesstimate fingers crossed I haven't lost any more well you can clearly see the sun's come out to play woohoo so this is some of them but we're going to start over there in the big bed and that's where I've lost a couple Right, I'm giddy. <laughs> what did I guess? 15. What do you all guess? Right, I'm going to stick you on the tripod. I'm going to grab my secateurs and we get stuck in.
This is one of the Long Island cheese. It's a little tiddly piddly baby one. Actually, wow, that sun is strong now. I actually don't mind it being on the small side. Uh, it just makes it... <laughs> I can't see you because of the sun. It just makes it a bit more practical in terms of once I cut into it, I'm not trying to use up a massive, massive pumpkin oil in one go. So Long Island cheese, I'll talk more about them when they're all harvested, about their different qualities. This is the small one. I had one that was from here, yay big, destroyed by the foxes. Likewise, oh, oh no. This. Ah. this this is a ooh la la Mousquet de Provence beautiful deep orange flesh but I don't know if you can see those gouge marks <sighs> with this that oh I'm wondering whether to just chop it in half to try and save some I might do This is also another muscate, slightly smaller, but <laughs> undamaged, that's the main thing. So when I'm harvesting them all, I'm leaving a little chunk of stalk on. <clears throat> In terms of storage, this is the weak spot. You don't want to lose your stalk because then it's sort of where we've got this skin and it'll get harder and harder in storage. This skin is acting like the packaging and as it cures and gets harder, even better. If the, if the stalk snaps off, if you're doing your harvest, you've probably done it by now anyway, because I'm so late. But if you've done it, if you've knocked any stalks off, they're the ones to use first, because underneath there it's soft, that's gonna start to rot. Uh, so yeah, get them used up quickly. Right, that's the bed of the bigger ones from which I've lost one muscae and one Long Island cheese and it looks like I might have lost another muscae. I'm trying not to be disappointed. I'm going to turn you all round and we're going to go into the... <laughs> your way down here. We're going to go into the butternuts and a couple of random others bed. Oh, ah, it's another one. <laughs> This is jack-o'-lantern. It's your kind of traditional um, Halloween carving pumpkin. I don't carve, <laughs> these are for eating, but look, oh my goodness. Oh, and there, that I think might be slug. <sighs> goodness, I wanted them. I might be able to save the back half that hasn't been touched. How frustrating. got a couple more of those that I will get in a minute. Oh no! No, 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 no! This is, this was sugar plum. I think, is that slugged? Oh man, I'm not even going to bother taking that home. And then I've got a few of the little, these are little golden nuggets. That looks whole. <laughs> oh, good grief. And then the rest are butternuts. I'll talk more about storage in a moment, but um, yeah, I'm just looking at the skin. I can see a little little bit of damage there. Anything that's damaged, I'm not going to store. It depends what kind of the dam what kind the damage is. It might be that I take it home. I still, you know, harvest it to take home and I'll just cook with it kind of pretty much straight away. Right. I'm going to gather the rest up, get them back to the table so I can have my annual squash harvest on the table photograph. Yay! and have a count up and try not to be too disappointed at any more damage. Arrgh!
gosh harvest. Oh dear. Oh, the barrels are so much better. <laughs> <laughs> it's so light. Ta-da! <laughs> it's better than nothing, isn't it? Um, so I've ended up with six duds. Six that have been so damaged. Um, yeah, not worth it. And here, 19. Yay! So it's a little bit better than I thought. Better than my 15. Oh, although one, oh no, one, two. So two of the 19 are slight question marks because there is a bit of damage. But what I'm thinking, what I'm planning is that these two can come home with me straight away. I'm going to cut them in half. Where there's been damage, and I don't know who's done the damage, I don't know what pathogens are on there. They're going to go in the compost, and the other halves I'll use. So, that's okay. You know, that's okay. That's, um, what's double 19 38? That's one, it's one every two to two and a half, no, every two and a half to three weeks. That's fine. I mean, there are a couple of absolute tiddlers. That's only going to do that. Oh, for instance, so this is a small one, but if I combine, chop this all up, combine it with, say, chickpeas and some beans or whatever, a curry that would do four portions. So even the little ones, I'll get four meals out of. The bigger ones, um, like the muskay, I probably get eight meals out of that. The big muskay, 16 meals. Fab, fab, fab. So they're mostly button up, bog standard button up, Waltham. I use them year after year after year. These seeds came from the seed co-op, seed cooperative. Unfortunately, they are no longer. You might try someone like Tamar Seeds, they do organic seeds, or <laughs> my brain's gone blank, sorry, never mind, never mind seeds, let's focus on the harvest. So in terms of storage, uh, I'll gradually get them home. We're not due a frost. Just looking at the next two weeks of forecast, as we, the first two weeks of November, in two weeks time we'll get down to three degrees in the evening. They'll tolerate three degrees. But I will try to get them home over the next two weeks. I can't get them all home in one go, too heavy. Once I get them home, I'll simply clean off the worst of the mud, do as little as possible to them. For exactly like I was saying out in the field, out in the field, what am I talking about? Out in the garden, about the skin is the precious bit. This is our packaging. We don't want broken packaging to store our food in. So the minimum amount of, of cleaning, just a wet wipe, get them clean. And cleaning them, that's just really for my convenience of storing them at home because they'll go under the bed, they'll go in the back of the wardrobe, don't want mud everywhere. So a bit of a wipe clean, and that's it. That's the magic of squash. We don't have to use electricity to store them. We don't have to freeze them to store them. They literally will get bunged away in a corner somewhere um, and forgotten about. Well, not forgotten about. I know they're there and I'll pull them out when I want to use them. Butternuts store really well and they'll store for, oh, I mean, well over a year. <laughs> I've had butternut store and I've then eaten one 14, 15, 16 months later. Great, they store really well. Other varieties don't store quite as well. Hey Rosie. So I've got the Long Island cheese, the Muscade de Provence. They don't store quite so long. I've not gone beyond six months with either of them, so they'll be the first to use up. Besides, the Muscade is one of the ones that's damaged, so I'll use it anyway. Likewise, when you've gathered your harvest together, Anywhere you spot there's any damage to that skin, set them aside to use within the next few weeks. Don't store any with the damaged skin. So good, that's storage. And I think what I'm going to do now is start to get this lot home. And then when we get home, I'm going to just run through a few recipe ideas for you all because it's that time of year. You know, it's that thing, isn't it, about seasonal eating something I bang on about all the time and I will continue to bang on about it if you eat seasonally that's one of the cheapest ways to eat because when things are in season it tends to mean they're also in glut so shops should be selling them 
more cheaply than they would be at say the opposite end of the year so like tomatoes in December they're going to be expensive it's the wrong time squash right now in the UK well North America wherever this is their season so the shop should have tons of them and the price should be quite good so yeah we'll do that when we get home if you get cold <laughs> really quickly I don't know why I'm speeding up and we'll go through some recipe ideas and if I think of anything on my way home that I've forgotten about storage oh taste just a quick one on taste people always say to me oh how does it taste what's it like to be honest with you all squash tastes pretty much the same doesn't it um, the muscae does have a really beautiful deep orange flesh and I think it is a slightly richer taste than bog standard butternut but honestly I, I think just grow whatever squash you fancy if you're looking at long-term storage butternuts are the best for storing so maybe just stick with butternuts if you want to rely on them being stored but yeah taste wise <laughs> they all taste the same don't they ultimately it's just about growing different ones because of how they look in the garden as they're growing when they look pretty in the, in the colors and the harvest table yay all right i'll see you back on the ranch <laughs> home on the ranch shortly come on pack up the granny trolley we're off yuck <laughs> got soaked that forecast totally wrong today yeah soaked on the way home i'm kind of overly warm i've taken all the damp excuse me <coughs> sorry excuse me all the damp wet layers off right that was and i'm a bit like oh, because yeah that granny trolley heavy getting up the stairs heavy what i will do over the next like i said i think it's going to probably take two I'm trying to work out how long it'll take me to get all the harvest home. If I go to the plot every day, I can maybe get it all home over the course of a week. Yeah. And hopefully that should beat, well, we're not due a frost, but you know, that really cold weather that's due at the end of the second week of November. Right, get your thoughts together. So, um, a couple of things I forgot to say outside the shed. Um, one was about ripeness. Oh, the granny Charlie's still out in the hall. I haven't got a squash to show you. People talk about the stalk being kind of corky. It turns like it's sort of like wood, but light, you know, you tap on it. It feels really dry and brown. Generally at that stage, you know your squash are ripe rather than when the stalk is still green. But when I show you the Muscade de Provence, that's the, that was the really big ones with, with the ribs and it's the sort of the green. Well, when you saw them today, they're green. They do eventually turn orange. So what I will do with the Muscade de Provence and there are a couple of the butternuts, which I think they just came on a bit later than others. So they're still a little, they're a bit pale they're not quite there yet i'll simply put those in my front window in the sunshine in the window and they will continue to ripen there excuse me last year one of my muskets i had i think it was around about march time by when it was completely orange <laughs> no green in sight so yeah any that are a little bit unripe i'll put them in the window they'll finish but to be honest I, i'll just go onto the, they'll ripen even under the bed so, in terms of storing, like I said, they just go under the bed, back of the wardrobe, basket in the kitchen, fine. However, if I cut a big one open, oh, I was really glad today as well because Sheena was down at the, at the allotment today. And so when I was wheeling the barrow back to the shed, that's, that's his voice you heard. I was looking at all the large ones and looking at the ones that are damaged and I need to cut into them straight away to save what I can. And I, was there, I thought, there's too much here. I can't do all of this in one go. So I thought, you know what? I'll give them one, one of them to Sheena because I'd asked her how her squash had done. They hadn't done great. I don't think she'd got any. So I said, look, please have this one. Because with those big ones, once you cut into them, you're going to have to use it all up you know, pretty much straight away, within 
two or three days. So with the big ones, how on earth do you manage them in terms of storing? Because especially if you're on your own or there's just two of you, you're not going to eat an eight portion, 16 portion squash all in one go. The easiest thing to do um, would be skin the rest of it, chop it, cube it up, you know, scoop out all the seeds, do all the chopping, that sort of thing freeze it. I like to freeze mine chunked up. Um, it just means that they're sort of quicker to cook when I come to cook. Now if you do that and you freeze them, the, the texture isn't great when you take them back out of the freezer, but that's fine if you're doing something like soup that you're going to blend anyway. So think of any pumpkin recipes where, or squash recipes, where you're going to mash that pumpkin squash up. Look, if I say pumpkin, I mean pumpkins and squash. If I say squash, I mean squash and pumpkin. I've got pumpkins on the brain because it's Halloween. Um, yeah, think about recipes where you're gonna mash the pumpkin anyway. So freezing them, not an issue. The other thing about doing them in, in, in chunks, in smaller chunks, means that if I only want a handful um, I usually use more than that, but if I only wanted a handful, if they're in chunks, I can just grab a handful rather than in big pieces. The other thing, of course, and it makes, it just makes squash to the next level, roasting it. Now, at the moment, I'm not using my oven at all, um, but if you are using your oven, I think any of us that are using our ovens, we're trying to absolutely maximise their use, aren't we? So if we're only doing one thing on the top shelf, what can I put into the rest of, how much can I stuff in this oven to make the most of it being on? So of course, if you've got a big squash like that, you could kind of cut slices, still on the skin, don't worry about that. Put them in a tray, in a, you know, in a, a baking tray, slot them in under whatever it is you're, that you're baking and roast your squash for a bit. <clears throat> After about half an hour, they should be soft enough to work with, but maybe give them 40 minutes. Give them a roasting and then very easy, I mean, it's, it's quicker and easier than chopping, in fact. You can just scoop that now roasted flesh out off the skin and freeze the roasted flesh. That works perfectly well too. Again, that's going to be for a recipe where you're wanting mushed <laughs> pumpkin or squash. So generally I would say the, the, the best, the easiest way to store your squash is just as nature packaged them herself under the bed. <laughs> the main thing is keep them frost free. So if you've got, maybe you've got an outhouse, a garage, and you think, oh, I'll store them all out there do you know for sure that your outhouse garage whatever it is never go below freezing if you're not sure pop a maximum thermometer out there monitor it before you put the squash in there just make sure that wherever you put them you might have a basement you might have an attic wherever it is that you put them it's not going to go below freezing because otherwise you're going to end up with a puddle of mush um so yeah I store them as nature intended, it's easy, it costs nothing, blah, blah, blah. However, if I've got a really big one that I'm cutting into and I can't use it all in one go, I would freeze it in chunks. The other thing with a really big one that I will probably do, I might have, I'm going to have to look at my schedule, but I might have a day of literally just cooking squash in different recipes. So, okay, what are the recipes, what are my go-to recipes for squash? And I think, I just made a quick little list. I, I think these are all in my In The Kitchen playlist. So, risotto. Yum, yum, yum. A squash risotto, especially with some sage, little fried off sage leaves, that bit of crunch. Squash in, in, with risotto rice. Match made in heaven. Absolutely yummy. Risotto tends to be a bit of a treat in this house because the risotto rice is more expensive than regular brown rice. I will often make a risotto without wine because I don't tend to have wine in the house and I'm not going to go buy a bottle of wine just to make a risotto with. If I've had friends over and there's a bit of leftover wine I will keep it in the fridge and then within a few days yeah I can have a risotto. 
but yeah it tends to be a slightly more expensive meal to make especially if you use butter and wine and um, if you're folding in some parmesan no, um, some parmesan cheese when I say parmesan of course I mean a vegetarian version which can't officially call itself parmesan but you know what I mean so risotto lovely but luxury an absolute go-to though is curry they're lovely in a curry and I mean I'm not going to teach any of you how to make a curry I'm sure you all know but they're one of those I love curries because they're a great using things up in the fridge um, meal to make just infinite infinite variations of what you can combine with them but my favorite is squash chickpeas and some other kind of bean as well so the chickpeas retain some bite um, in the cooking the beans, depending on what beans I use, I might have some beans which go soft and ooh, mushy in all the curry sauce and some which are a bit more bitey. And of course, the squash will, you know, cook down, will go a bit softer. So it's a nice combination of bite and squish, <laughs> all in gorgeous, you know, in the, in the curry spices. Either on its own or, yeah, serve it with some rice. Brown rice is my preferred choice and it, it's about... I haven't bought any for ages, it's about a pound a kilo at the moment, I think maybe a bit more, but yeah, squash in a curry is great, and so that's what I mean about chucking anything in, if you've got some squash, maybe you've got a tin of chickpeas, chuck them in, maybe you've got a little bit of leftover broccoli in the fridge, chuck it in, maybe you've got some peas in the freezer, chuck them in, <laughs> maybe you've got um, a, a couple of leftover carrots in the fridge, which you think, oh, they need using up, chop them up, chuck them in. Chuck in whatever you want. The main thing is with your curry, it's about the spices, isn't it? So take your time picking your spices and you will know how hot or mild you want it. I prefer my curry mild. I love the taste, I love the warmth, the mellowness of the spices. I don't want my tongue falling off because it's so hot. But yeah, curry with squash, brilliant. Uh, baked squash, baked stuffed squash. Oh, love it, but... I won't be having any this season probably because it's an oven thing uh, but yeah with a with a butternut on its side scoop out the seeds I like it stuffed with goat's cheese sun-dried tomatoes and pine kernels it's really good yeah that just made me salivate yeah a stuffed baked squash is one of my absolute favorites I haven't had it for ages because it um, but if you're um, you know if you're if your fuel isn't as bad as mine, it's well worth trying. And then of course, oh my goodness, soup, 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 all day long. I love soups, great for lunch, brilliant. Um, I'm trying to remember, I was making a list, the beet, sorry, pardon me, beet, beet carotene, beet cold soup has squash in it. <clears throat> and again, that's a really lovely recipe. Um, because it's all about um, our orange and red vegetables so actually you know if you've got a sweet potato and some squash and a red pepper whack them in if you've not got a sweet potato you know maybe put more squash. it's one of those recipes you can adjust it to your own taste put in whatever you want but we're chucking all that beta carotene in there to for our immune system in the winter but another, another, another favourite, and I know that a load of you love this as well, not necessarily my recipe, but pearl barley. It, there's something about pearl barley in food which I find utterly comforting. I don't know why. Um, it must be something from childhood. Did we have pearl barley soup on a Friday at school, I wonder? I don't know, but... Yeah, pearl barley to me is like having a lovely big hug. So I make a pumpkin and pearl barley soup. It's one of those, I mention it in the recipe. When you first put the two part, you make the two parts separately when you combine them. At first you think, this isn't gonna work. You just slowly keep combining and then it comes together and it's gorgeous. But what I would say with the pearl barley is, a lot of folks say that pearl barley gives them a, quite an upset tummy as in flatulent so you can get really windy quite gripey tummy from it 
pearl barley, um, it swells in the, in the, whatever the cooking liquid is. In this case, I'm cooking it in stock. It swells in that stock. When you go to sort of serve it up, oh, yum, 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 the pearl barley actually continues to swell. And I think that's what causes the issue for some people. So I would say it's well worth making it the day before. Make it up, make it up, make it up. Put it in your fridge and then have it the next day heated up and you will see overnight from that point at which you tip it out of the pan into your Tupperware or whatever your container you're putting it into, when you come back to it the next day you will see the pearl barley is almost doubled in size again. So yeah, if you have issues with pearl barley, consider cooking it the day before, giving it 24 hours and then either adding it to what you want to eat or cooking the whole recipe. 24 hours beforehand and eating it the following day when the pearl barley has swelled to its maximum and it's not going to keep doing that in your gut. Worth a try. It's worth a try because I love the stuff. So look, there's there's five recipes off the top of my head which I know are in my playlist. Um, squash risotto, squash chickpea curry, baked, I think the baked stuffed squash is in there. Um, squash, pumpkin and pearl barley soup and the beta carotene and beta cold soup. Lovely things to use with squash and what I'm thinking is for one of my big Muscade de Provence, I reckon on the day that I cut into it, looking at that list again, apart from the baked and stuffed one, I might make all four of those recipes, excluding the stuffed and baked one, I might make all four of those recipes and that the size of Muscade de Provence I reckon I'll get six to eight portions of each recipe, so I will end up with anywhere between 24 and 32 portions of food. Meals, complete meal. That would be fantastic. So I'll have to look, have a little look at my schedule and see where I can have a completely free day, because it will take me most of the day. And then most of it, oh, I need to have a rejig of the freezer. The beans are still in there, they need to come out. But yeah, most of it will go into the freezer and a little bit for the fridge for the following few days. Yay! Anyway, ah, I hope it was fun to join me for the squash harvest again this year. Yay! I do love this day. Uh, and I know that loads of you have come to just really, it's one of the videos everyone wants to see. And I think I know why. I think it's because as a vegetable, is it strictly speaking a fruit? Let's not have that argument, let's call it a veg. As a vegetable, they are such beautiful vegetables in their variety of shape, size, texture, colour, that whenever we amass our, no matter how big or small the harvest was, when we amass them together, they're such a joyful sight, aren't they? And I think that's what you've all enjoyed over the years when I've done my harvest. It's just the joy, the, the utter celebration of the harvest in its all its colourful beauty. Yay! So look, it's really late in the year. I know most of you will have probably done your harvests already. I really hope you had a good one. I uh, hope you haven't had as much damage as me and lost as many as me. But you know what? It could have been worse. I could have lost a lot. So I'm not going to be downhearted. 19 squash to play with. Some of them big. Yay! All right, lovelies, when will I see you next and what will I be doing? I'm not sure. It might be in the kitchen. I'm just trying to think what's coming up. I'm looking at, I'm sitting by my pin board. This, you see, the weather has been throwing me left, right and centre because it's supposed to be dry right now. I should be doing something else. It, mm, we'll see. Anyway, the point is, hopefully I'll see you all again before too long. So in the meantime, take care of yourselves. Take care of your gorgeous harvests. I hope you've got most of everything in by now. And for those of you of our Antipodean friends, yeah, you'll be really starting to get your seeds in the ground now, won't you? And maybe you're starting to bring things on in cold frames and greenhouses. Whatever stage you're up to, I hope you're all happy with where you're at. So until the next one, cheerio.